okay, what I did is I just kind of finished off the front of this just a little bit. It was, I was kind of liking how this thing was coming out, this little surprise canvas I caught. So I just added a little bit more sky right here and just a little bit more ground. Now we want to talk to you a little bit about objects as you start, start to decide. I'm starting to get a little visualness uh, to it. I need more darks up here and everything, but that, you know, we can add as we, as we get into the painting. The uh, important thing here is that, as uh, the dog goes walking behind me there. I think he saw that. The important thing here is uh, um, we want to get uh, some areas here we can start adding some trees. Objects within your painting adds a lot of visual depth uh, to your painting. So we can do that. We can add this visual depth if we apply the same type of things. Trees as they go back are going to become more like the sky. Trees as they come forward will get more contrast and actually they get darker. So the darker colors advance. So let's start first with this particular technique since we're here on painting foreground trees. So I'll be using my knife for some of it and my small brush uh, for some of it. And uh, then you can reach over and uh, also grab yourself a little synthetic, uh, like a little synthetic flat or something like that, that can help you with some of the edges. I like that. Or some of the fusion filberts, I like those as well. And again, when you're a landscape painter, you're a painter edges and you use these different tools. You don't need to go out there and buy the magic brush. It doesn't exist. Okay. Uh, but you can use some of these tools to give you just different types of edges. And I use just very few. Uh, first thing that you want to do, is, let's just say we're going to have a tree. And I know starting out my tree is going to want to be dark. So I'm just going to take some color over here. I'm going to take some browns and some yellows here. And I tend to paint from darks to lights or mid-tones and then set in real dark tones and then lights. But let's just say I want to set in a tree here that's good, that this is going to go up. First thing you want to do is just kind of sketch it in. And, and it's nice to go into the, uh, into the wet paint. Uh, that you have. And if you don't have wet paint, that's okay. Just add a little bit of sky color to your uh, tree and that'll help keep it soft. But let's just say we're going to put in a tree and we'll have a set of trees and stuff that, are, that can go right here. But let's just say we're going to have a tree here. So it'll take us a little bit of some browns and some yellows here. And I'll pick this up and I model it on the brush. And then as I actually go to paint the tree, I'll use shorter, choppier strokes here with the edge of this which will lay off color a little different. We want to lay the color off onto the tree, kind of modeled here. Now, sometimes I will take my uh, palette knife like this, and I'll pick up even some of the greens and some of the browns and stuff. And let's get a little more yellow in here. I'll just model this up like this, and then I'll just scoop it up like that up onto the side. And I'll use this, especially into a forward tree, and just pull across like this to set some of the shape of that tree in that I want to have. And you can have a light side, if the, and you can have a shadow side. You can pull highlights across. You'll see, depending on the, uh, um, you know, some of the, the scene, you'll see me do it a bunch of different ways. But the thing is to get some of this modeled interest up here through the tree. Now, as I uh, go out into the branches, you can use that uh, little one or, or uh, you can, uh, you know, use like the edge of your little bristle filbert here. Uh, I love the edge of my bristle filbert because it won't make these branches and stuff, again, really, really perfect. And I'm not going to take all the time to make perfect little branches and stuff going out here. But I love to dab and paddle and just kind of drag and uh, put down. You know, the best way to understand trees is just to go out there and look at them and uh, you know, the more I look at them, the more I'm starting to understand some of the different ways. Some of them really get all bent up, but there's all different kinds of ways that you can add trees. And I like to, I, I like to even kind of roll this brush, uh, you know, through as I'm applying this. Just kind of roll it a little bit, roll it in your hands, and that, uh, you know, makes the, the not quite as a, a perfect line which is what you want, you know, you want your trees to have some variations. You then, um, you can, you know, your forward trees are going to have a tremendous amount of contrast on them. So you'll even go into some of your blacks and browns and some red violets for some cool color. Uh, get some black and brown. Model this on your brush. Don't use it solid. And just kind of tap this through. And especially like under the crook of the tree here where branches and stuff join up. You know, to shadow sides, tapping a little bit of that, especially along the 
the tree trunk, the big four part of the tree trunk. You can put that in there and, and start to set that up. I like to set a few little shapes of it up here in the ground as well. Uh, you know, you never know, uh, you know, like it might be a root or something standing up there. So we have to set all that into the ground. But, you know, some of that movement gets you, will get you there. Now, as you start to develop your tree, you know, of course, the winter scene's pretty easy. It's almost done. I mean, I do stipple just a little bit of lightweight stuff here to to start building uh, 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 little branches and stuff, and that's a little severe there. But, um, yeah, it's pretty much done. The uh, You know, if you're painting a tree in summer or something like that, I might then take some of my light color, and I'll thin it out just a little bit. Now I'll start to use the color thin, and I don't want it dark. I, just, I want it soft and maybe uh, even a little sky color into it as well, into this green to really soften this color. And I'll use the brush kind of flat like this. And what I'm actually doing is painting the very soft receding edge, the backside. You wanna, you wanna visualize your trees in like three planes, a back plane, a middle plane, and a front plane. And so by doing this and using these like this, what I'm actually doing is creating the uh, back plane here of these of the tree. So I'm just lightly, you know, these are just these are edges, the soft edges. Well, that's not quite so soft there. Nice thing about wet paint, you just smear it around and it's off, it's gone. But these are the uh, back edges of some of the tree, the leaves on the other side here. We'll just leave, we'll just show those right there. So that's the soft ones. Then I pick up a little more color here. Pick up a little more color and, you know, add some variation like some other yellows and stuff. Again, paint with that model brush. And now I'll start to put in the uh, mid plane of the tree. And I use my brush in many different ways. Sometimes I just smash it down like this. You can also, I use my palette knife for some of this as well. By setting my palette knife and just dragging a little bit here and there, I can create another look to the tree here by having, a, you know, different kinds. The thing is you want to get different textures. And as you paint the mid area, the mid plane of the tree, what you're going to have is more color and uh, more edges. So as you come forward in your scene, that, that's the main rule. As you come forward in your scene, you have more color and more edges. So as I'm, I just come through and I develop a little bit more here, and sometimes I just kind of smash it down and just kind of let that wiggle around in there, develop a little more of the color in there on the tree. So I'll use the, you know, the palette knife and, and make sure that you cover up certain parts of the front of the tree because the tree branches don't just go half and half. There'll be some coming right across the front of the tree and that will push the trunk into the tree as well. So don't make sure you hit too much of that. Uh, anything you get too much of, you just scrape it off with a knife. It works really well. So I set this in. So you want to set some across the trunk so that the trunk sets into the tree. Then what you do is you then go into the front part of the tree, which is going to be your shadow and your light. And the shadow here, I'll just pick up some dark green. You could cool this with a little red violet or a little black, again, vary some of the color. Again, I could use um, my darker green like this, and I could push this in to push a shadow edge in uh, onto the tree. You don't just go tap, 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 dab, 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 dab. You don't want to do that. You want to create areas of shadow here on your tree, areas of shadow here. So here's a, an area of shadow and an area of shadow an area of shadow. And so the shadow is actually coming up into the more forward plane here of the tree. Here. There we go. And then you want some lights. So I'm going to take some of my lighter green, some lighter yellow, and some white 
here, model this onto your brush, and you can tap in lighter, not tap as much as, just kind of move some of this model color through into the lighter parts of the tree here to give your highlights. Make sure it's modeled, light. You have some greens and some yellows and some whites. I also like to apply this with the edge of the palette knife as well. Model some of that up there and just tap little, little edges of it and it'll create little leaves as well coming here to the front and a little bit over some of the edges of the shadow so the highlight comes up in front and that'll give you all all kinds and you'll have I'll paint the trees all different kinds of ways you'll have lots of them to to look at there but that gives you more volume of a tree that's coming forward so this is how you approach a tree to the front of a scene you paint you visualize it in three planes the back plane which is very soft the mid plane which builds more color and then in the forward plane you'll have your your darkest darks and your lightest lights use some of your different tools to give you some of the different edges so that your tree has a lot of interest and you can come back in and you can put little details too on a real forward one a few you know more specific leaves uh you know that i have done i i did that on some other paintings but here on you'll see that uh you'll see the receding tree up against a tree here to uh, the front where the real darks and stuff and so it's not just dab 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 darks they grow and the darks go in clumps in areas and stuff and so and it's the volume of color that you have that says what type of uh, a, a tree that you that you have there uh, or that you're painting and on some landscapes with very very forward forward trees you might take your little detail brush and use some of those darks and actually physically depending on how close the tree is to you actually physically paint some of those darks okay so there's uh, how to paint uh, some of the techniques you find in a forward tree look at the photos real quick and you'll see some of the different and uh, next we'll go do some distant trees. See you in a second.